Hello, my name is Jean Shafiroff, and I am a woman involved with many different charity boards here on the eastern end of Long Island in New York and then in our country. Today, we have a very interesting program on the Southampton Animal Shelter. But before I introduce the president of the Southampton Animal Shelter, I'd like to talk a little bit about philanthropy. What exactly is philanthropy? Well, philanthropy is the love of all living things and the love of our environment. Who can be a philanthropist? Is it just only the very, very wealthy? And the answer is, of course not. Anyone can be a philanthropist. And how does someone become a philanthropist? They become a philanthropist by donating their time, their knowledge, and then available resources. And today, we have millions and millions of Americans everywhere who are engaged in the act of philanthropy. These people are all acting philanthropists. Now, I'd like to introduce John Bradham, our featured guest. John is the president of the Southampton Animal Shelter. John, it is great to see you, and thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Jean, and thanks for the kind words. And who do we have here with you today? This is Boz, short for Bosby. Boz is a rescue, of course. I've had him for several years now. Boz was originally found in a box in the New York subway. He ended up with Animal Haven, a wonderful rescue and adoption center of New York, and then he ended up with me. Well, he's adorable. Hello, Boz. Hello. How are you today? Say hi, Boz. <laughs> John, how did you initially get involved with the animal world, and how did you develop this love of animals? It's really a love I've had my whole life, and it came from my parents. They were both animal lovers. Uh, my mom, who's a huge animal lover, she has her own animal sanctuary in Hollywood, South Carolina. And she really taught us as children to love animals. We always had a household full of animals, and um, it's just been part of my life ever since. Well, that's very nice. And one of the things that I regret, I have two daughters, and while they were growing up, we never had a pet. Today, we have five rescue animals in the household. But I'm sorry that back then we didn't have a little dog or a cat because these little creatures give so much love. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I think that um, it's a gift that keeps giving. Uh, you know, the, it's unconditional love. I always say there are really only two shots at unconditional love in your life, your parents and your pets, and you need to take advantage of it. I agree. When you have a pet, that pet, if you're good to a pet, that pet will be your best friend forever. And Look at little Boz. Boz, who do you love more than anyone else? <laughs> Is it John Bradham? <laughs> I think Boz so. Boz loves his papa more than anybody. That's beautiful. So, John, can you tell me a little bit about the Southampton Animal Shelter and, and its beginnings? I understand it was founded in 2010. I was not involved back then, and I don't think you were either, but it started with a group of concerned citizens on the eastern end of Long Island. And what did they do exactly? Yeah, it's, it's really a great story. Uh, the Southampton, Southampton Animal Shelter was like so many shelters. It just wasn't what it should be. The animals were not in an ideal condition. So a number of wonderful local people in the community got involved. They formed the Southampton Animal Shelter Foundation. Then they went to the city of Southampton and agreed to take the shelter private and operate it privately. Uh, it began its operations January 1st of 2010. Nice, and what year did you get involved? I've been involved, I think I first got on the board of the Southampton Animal Shelter about two and a half years ago. Yes, and I know how I got involved was through my children. And many years ago, I was chairing the Southampton Hospital Gala. I think it was 2011, 2013, one of those years. I had chaired that three times. And my daughters came to me and they said, Mom, there's this incredible animal shelter in Southampton. 
we want you to get involved. And I said, I would love to, but I can't do everything because I was very entrenched in work for the hospital, which is an amazing place out here. So after the gala, I went over to the Southampton Animal Shelter. I took a tour. I met the players. I said, this is an amazing place. I said, I'd like to get involved, but I'm not sure what I can do. And so what I was told was they were giving a cocktail party to raise funds. And I knew from the hospital gala that if we did a larger event, maybe a dinner, we'd be able to raise more money because the cocktail party, although a beautiful party, was only raising about $78,000. So I got involved. I was asked to chair the gala. And that next summer, we did a dinner based on what the Southampton Hospital was doing, the same formula. And we were able to raise about $350,000, $400,000. And I believe that was in about 2013. Can't give the exact date. And since then, I've been involved every year. And that's because I so, so believe in the work of the shelter. What is the shelter doing in response to the COVID-19 pandemic? Here on the East End, all around the country, we see people 38 million people out of work. People don't have food to feed their families. Mm -hmm. They don't have money to pay their rent. They certainly, many people don't have money to take care of their animals. How are we helping? Well, let me tell you a little bit about the shelter, what we do, and then I'll tell you how we've adjusted to the uh, COVID crisis. Um, the shelter is actually a all intake shelter, meaning it must take all animals within its community, which is about 22 townships. So we take any animals in need, strays, abandoned, whatever, uh, in that area, but we also help a lot of other animals. We help animals that are in need across the country, uh, from New York City to Texas to Puerto Rico. And we've even helped animals that need homes that have been rescued from the meat trade in China. Uh, and we have a lot of services we provide in addition to simply being a shelter. We have a veterinary clinic in which we do low cost uh, spay and neuter, wellness checks and basic veterinary care. And then we have a, um, an actual spay and neuter van which goes throughout New York State to provide low cost spay and neuter, particularly for communities that really need it. And then lastly, we have a food pantry, um, where, uh, which is particularly relevant now for people that are having trouble feeding their cats. They are dogs. They can come to us and we'll provide them with food. But we, we really haven't skipped a, a step since the um, pandemic, although at the height of the pandemic, we closed for general public. We've remained open the whole time for foster and adoption. So if someone is interested in fostering and adopting, they can go on our website, find the animal they're interested in, fill out an adoption form, and they'll be promptly contacted by an adoption coordinator, or simply call the shelter and we'll connect you with an adoption coordinator. We also, as part of that service, um, you can come in to the shelter and see your cat or dog, or we'll do a curbside service. You can come in your car and we'll bring the cat or dog or other animals that you're interested in um, out to you and let you meet them in the car. Yes, I've been reading all about the drive-through adoptions where people don't even have to get out of their car. They can, they can choose a, a pet online, fill out an application, and then when, once they're vetted, they come right up to the shelter and the animal is brought out to them. But of course you need to meet the family and, and make sure that uh, they're suitable for an adoption because adopting an animal is a big responsibility. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing, but the shelter is, is very careful and, and you always want to see the dogs and cats going to uh, people who are responsible and who truly want a pet. And um, so during the COVID-19 pandemic, we've all heard about um, uh, dogs and cats and can they get this disease? Now, what I've read is that they are 
there are only about three or four dogs or cats in the United States who've actually come down with this disease. And there are only about eight or nine lions and tigers, which were at the Bronx Zoo, who've come down with this disease. And the CDC has put forth different guidelines to protect our pets. But with over one million people in the United States who've come down with COVID-19, there have only been four or five dogs or cats who've come down with the virus. And so the likelihood of a dog or a cat coming down with this virus is almost next to nothing. And then I don't think there's been one case of a dog or cat giving COVID-19 to a human being. Is that correct, John? Yeah, I don't think they have any documented cases of transmission from a, a cat or dog to a human. I, I think the whole cat or dog issue is a red herring. I mean, it's negligible. You've got uh, over a million people that have the virus, a handful of pets. So I just, I don't think it's anything to worry about. Well, I agree with you, but just uh, for the sake of our viewers, I think it's important that um, we go over some of the um, CDC guidelines for pets right now, and the CDC has put forth uh, different guidelines for our furry friends, and the following is what they suggest. Number one, when you take your dog out, you have your dog leashed, and that you social distance your dog six feet away from another person and from another dog. Number two, they're suggesting that you not bring your dog to a dog park right now. And then, of course, if your dog goes rolling around in the mud, it's advised that you clean your dog before you bring him back into the house. But I think you do that anyway. And then the CDC also suggests with cats that you keep your, hats, your cats home. Now, if you feel that this is above and beyond, well, just look at it this way. We love our animals. Some of us love our animals more than we love people. And so taking these small little steps to take care of our animals is really not a bother at all. The dogs and cats don't need to wear masks. And um, life goes on, correct? I think that's right. I think that the, the one thing that's really sort of relevant on this is the CDC has said, if you do have the coronavirus, then you should try to social distance from your dog or cat. That's not always so easy. I think if you live in a family household, then you could have other members of the household walk and care for the cat or dog. But if you're alone with a cat or dog, I think social distancing would prove pretty difficult. It is difficult because, again, our dogs and cats are generally our best friend. What are the plans for the shelter this summer? We've had a gala every year, and now it seems like most of the, the galas are either being canceled, for sure, because we can only gather in groups of 10 or less right now, or they're going virtual. What is the shelter planning to do this summer? So, so unfortunately, we decided that the best thing to do was cancel our unconditional gala. And we're not going to do a virtual gala because there's a lot of time and expense involved. And we just also felt it's just not the right time for a gala. But what we will be doing is replacing that with a matching funds drive that we hope everyone will participate in. Nice, yes. Um, I've been on a bunch of the virtual galas on um, Zoom, and I think that um, they're nice. But I also think there's a big expense involved. and. In the case of the shelter, I know uh, watching expenses is very important and we like to keep our overhead very low. And so I think maybe skipping the gala this year isn't such a bad thing. And moving forward um, long term, what, what, what does it look like for the shelter? Will we have enough money? Will we be able to expand? Will we be able to continue our operations as we've done in the past? What exactly? What's going to happen next year and the year after? And do we expect that our major donors will be enough, or do we have to keep raising money? Well, sure. I mean, look, we always have to keep raising money. And uh, the reality is the more money we raise, the more animals we can help. 
It's that simple. Um, we we want to be, we have big plans. We want to be a bigger part of the no-kill movement in this country and help more cats and dogs get out of shelters alive and forever home. So we're actually working on plans now to expand and upgrade the shelter, particularly in the veterinary and training areas because uh, the animals that have the hardest time getting out of the shelter and finding a home are older animals, animals with health problems, and animals with behavioral difficulties. So the things, those are things we're gonna focus on to try to help not only more animals in our community, but animals across the country. And obviously the more support we get, the more we can do that. I like that. I think those are all wonderful things to be involved with and moving forward, you know, each year in the United States, about 1.5 million animals are euthanized. And there are just about 6 million animals who are homeless. And so anything that we can do in this community to help our little furry friends is very, very important. The Southampton Animal Shelter, where are you located? Can you tell our listeners where? Well, we're actually in Hampton Bays. Yes. Um, but if you um, go to the website, and uh, you can just put in Southampton Animal Shelter, and it will come up. Um, it'll have all the contact information you need. And, if, and of course, as I said, right now, we're not generally open to the public, but you can certainly make an appointment to come visit whatever animal you're interested in. We're hoping that as this things clear up and the pandemic uh, slows down, we can have open generally to the public soon. Yes, now I've heard that adoptions are way up in the United States. And is that true for Southampton Animal Shelter? Are you finding that more people are coming in to adopt during this pandemic? And if so, is that raising any concern for you? So f fosters and adoptions are up for us and up across the country, particularly fostering. Uh, the last number I saw on that was from Best Friends Animal Society that said fostering across the country was up by 93%. And adoption's also up a lot. So it's one of the, the good things that's come out of the pandemic um, is that more people are fostering and adopting. That's good for the animals and it's good for people because it's really helped a lot of people during this difficult time and many scientific studies that show that having an animal helps you with your well-being. And of course, a lot of people now are facing anxiety and loneliness, so it's been very beneficial. Are there concerns about what happens after the pandemic passes? Yes, there are. And I know that a lot of people in the animal welfare world are very worried that when it passes, a lot of people that foster or adopted are gonna now bring these animals back. I personally am more optimistic than that because I think what a lot of people who'd never fostered or adopted or discover is how wonderful it is to have an animal and how much it's enriched their lives. So I'm sure some will come back, but I think most are gonna stay where they are. Yes, I think when you have a little furry friend in the house and we have five rescues, what you find is that um, it's a lively house, it's a loving place and I think giving up a dog or a cat is, is a little bit like giving up a child. I couldn't do it. Um, it's a hard thing, but I, I, I do see, though, that some people have adopted during this, and if they have to go back to work, and maybe they have a new job that requires them to do a lot of traveling, um, they may not be able to have the time for their, their dog, and I think that's when the surrenders um, will begin and hopefully we won't see too much of that and um, for all the people um, watching this show can you give a few points on what they should think about before they consider adopting what are the responsibilities I I know the responsibilities but John you as our president of Southampton Animal Shelter tell our listeners and our viewers exactly what our what they should be in store for. Um, they'll get a lot of love, of course, when they adopt, but they also have to be responsible owners. Sure. Well, I think there are a lot more benefits than there are responsibilities, but of course there are responsibilities. You need to 
take care of your pets. Some pets are going to have veterinary issues. They have health issues just like humans do. They need to have regular checkups with the vet just like we do. And they develop many of the same problems. And um, just like if you got sick or old, you want someone to stay with you and help mm -hmm. you through that. Mm -hmm. You need to do that for your pet too. Um, you know, you also need to, and I think this is easy for most people, but provide love and care. It's a living mm -hmm. being and they're very sensitive to that. But I think for most people that's a natural because how can you not love them? Um, I think that if anyone is interested in fostering adoption but aren't sure, they should reach out to us. We have adoption coordinators who can go over all these issues with you. They've got a lot of experience and they actually have an adoption kit. that will sort of go over the different issues. And of course, if you adopt from us, you know, you have our low cost veterinary care, so that makes it a lot easy. So you don't just adopt from us and then, and then you're on your own. We're there to help you. Yeah. I, I've heard friends say they've had babies. They say, well, you know, it was great when I was in the hospital, but then they sent us home and we were like, what do we do? And they felt, you know, scared and abandoned. Well, you don't have to worry. If you adopt or foster from us, we're right there with you the whole way to answer any of your questions and help you with any of your problems. Well, that's really wonderful to hear. And I know that um, you even help train sometimes. And I think that's very, very important. And, um, but it's not too hard to train on your own, too. I mean, an animal can easily be um, trained um, with loving kindness and with a reward and a reward type of uh, training. And, um, but you, you help the people that come in. And what about the expense of owning a pet? Is, an ex is it an expensive thing to have a pet or, I think it and, then, and then can the shelter help, say, uh, for those people right now who are out of work? And um, what do you advise? Sure. Um, pets, with the, the main cost for pets is veterinary care because just like medical care, veterinary care can be very expensive. So it kind of depends on the situation. Um, some dogs, like Boz here, don't seem to have any problems. You could you know, drop them off a 100-story building and he'd be fine. But other dogs have a... Uh, lot of issues and you have to be prepared to deal with it but that's again that's what we're there for you know we have our own wellness and veterinary clinic and um, we will if, if it's appropriate we'll provide no cost and low cost veterinary care. Well thank you and any advice to our viewers on what to do right now should they adopt if they don't have a job uh, should they hold off? Um, what do you suggest right now? I think it depends on everyone's situation. Uh, you want to make sure that you have the financial well-being to take care of yourself and your animal. But um, I think it's a great time for people to adopt um, because a lot of people are, have, are home and they, have, they feel isolated. And of course, if you're not sure what to do, then foster. I mean, that's a great... You know, you can come borrow a pet for us and that if it doesn't work out, you can bring them back. So it's really, you, you don't have to commit to it at the upfront if you're not sure. And then if you're elderly, uh, what do you suggest? Do you suggest that someone maybe get a cat or a small dog versus a big giant dog? I would think so, but I'd like to hear from you. Well, I think it depends um, on what you're looking for, but I, I know that one thing that a lot of rescues throughout the country have that I really love, it's called Seniors for Seniors, where you actually have senior people adopting senior animals because they sort of fit together well. A lot of senior animals, so for instance, Boz is young and wants to run around and all that, but I have another dog at home, Merlin, who is a senior. Merlin just wants to sleep most of the day. Um, he likes to get up, eat, walk around a little bit, and sleep. So that seniors for seniors can work really well. But again, it, it just depends on what you want. I know my mom is 90, and um, she has a bunch of dogs and cats at home. And, um, you know, she likes all the activity. She likes to walk them. So it just depends on 
where you're at and what you want, but there is a perfect cat or dog for you somewhere. Well, you and your mom, you're both amazing people. And finally, we're about to finish, but how can we all give to the Southampton Animal Shelter? Well, um, you can give in many ways. Um, you can give uh, financially, of course, which is wonderful. And if you go to our website, you can make donations there. Um, or you can give your time. Uh, we, or, we have an active program for volunteers. So again, you can go to the website and contact us and you can volunteer to do a host of different things depending on really what it is you want to do. Excellent. This concludes our program on the Southampton Animal Shelter. I thank John Bradham for joining us today. He is the president of the Southampton Animal Shelter and I thank all of you for tuning in. Have a good day and hope to see you soon.